Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bedpost Podcast. I'm your host, Erin Pym. Here at the podcast, I like to invite guests and performers from the stage show Bedpost that are run here in Toronto and beyond into the studio to have a more in-depth conversation about sex and sexuality with me. This week, I have very special guests, really good friends of mine. They are the co-creators of Modern Horror, Andrew Warehan and Nicole Vazine. Hi, ladies. Hello. Hi, Erin. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah. How you doing? Hey, we're doing all right. How, How you, you doing? doing good? <laughs> doing real good, Erin. <laughs> doing real, real good. <laughs> um, I love that we're talking again, Nicole. Uh, you're gonna be. You're here for the first time. Yes, uh, it's my very first time. You're <laughs> yeah, in the Virgin. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrea, I've had you. I've had you before. Oh, I'm no oh, virgin. <laughs> you've been around, girl. Oh. <laughs> How many times, baby? <laughs> Have you been had? Um, and uh, modern horror. Let's just let's just tell the people what is it. <gasps> it's <Whoa>. an illustrated <laughs> memoir. Yes. Illustrated by this beautiful woman over here, Nicole Correct. Design. Mm-hmm. Uh, with over, so it's an illustrated memoir based on the two years I spent working as an escort. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got more than sixty photographs taken by Nicole and twenty-seven short stories that I wrote myself. Yes, no ghostwriter, no. <laughs> no, I'm the ghostwriter. <laughs> real ghost. Are you the ghost rider? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember that. <laughs> I'm the ghost ride the whip. <laughs> ghost rider is that a Nicolas Cage movie? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's Nicole. <laughs> Sick reference. <laughs> <laughs> what a burn. Um, <laughs> it's not a burn. Shady bitch. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. She I love Nick. I honestly love Nicholas. No, Cage. you don't. She does. Which fun fact? His birth name is Nicholas Coppola. Because he's actually related to like Francis Ford Coppola and Sophia Coppola, you the Coppola know it. family. <laughs> <laughs> What's your you wouldn't favorite? know it from Ghost Rider. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> okay, so Modern Horror is a book that y'all just released. When did it come out? Recently, very recently. Yeah, we we, ha- we launched it in Toronto. Um, in early December, mm-hmm. and you were our host, hostess, hostess with, most with the mostest. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And you did a New York book launch as well after that, right? Yes, we did that in early March. Yes. Wow, how the And who hosted slide. that? Tina fucking Horn hosted that. How? How did you get her? We got her because she had been contacted by the editor of a site called Hazlitt, Mm -hmm. which is the online imprint of uh, Penguin Random House. And they have like really cool long form essays and interviews. And so uh, that editor contacted Tina Horn because they knew about um, uh, the book Mm -hmm. and said, can you interview them? So through them, we got in contact and she sent us these like incredibly nuanced, interesting questions about uh, representation and really like had us dig deep into what our motivations were for making the book. Yeah. So um, when it came time to uh, organizing the New York launch, Mm -hmm. like she was pretty much our top pick. There was like no one else that we could think of that was just as insightful and engaging and funny smart as fuck smart as so much fuck so uh yeah she was incredible she was the best yeah what um so what did you determine was the main motivation behind modern horror from that interview did you come to any like hard and fast oh conclusions well one of the hardest questions she asked was what makes modern horror modern Ooh. <laughs> we're like, uh, Ooh. whoa. Okay, we need to like, we sat down for like many consecutive hours trying to answer that question. Yeah. And I think part of what makes the book modern is that um, sex workers traditionally aren't given the space to tell their own stories. And we're living in a modern age where, you, you know, something like the internet has done so much for giving sex workers voices. Yeah. Um, and I mean, growing their businesses. That's the main, we're going to talk about this in the second half. Online is the main place sex workers create and grow and foster their businesses. Mm-hmm. And it keeps One, them safe. It keeps them safe. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, there were other reasons why it was modern. Well, another thing that we had mentioned was just the process of making it felt very modern Mm -hmm. um, in the sense too that we, you know, 
we developed the project over the course of a few years. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the reasons for that was that at the very beginning, we didn't exactly know what form it would take. Mm -hmm. And also, Andrea was not out as being a former sex worker. Yes. So at that point, we were just kind of exploratory and we started experimenting online actually so social media became a huge part of like the testing ground for the project Mm -hmm. um it came it became this way for us to like play with the narrative but not be completely outright yet yes yeah Um, because i remember sorry to interrupt you i remember the first story you told at bedpost the stage show you presented it in a way this was a story that ended up in the book you presented it in a way that it could be fact or it could be fiction and it's for you to decide and figure out and wonder about and it's so so mysterious so you didn't exactly say that you were a sex worker and this was something that actually happened to you yeah that was a terrifying experience that first telling that first story or um right like my preamble before telling the story was so scary for me and being on stage and being like maybe it's true maybe it's not true i don't know who cares uh all right well i'm don't just going to read the story stop looking like i'm going to read the story okay <laughs> and then when i started reading the story and i could hear people laughing with me and not only that you could feel the focus i felt of the it room. i felt the support which like kind of changed my life game that changer night. Thank you, Erin and Bedpost. No. Seriously. Um, yeah. That's when I knew, okay, I think I think I can do this. I think I if if this crowd was on my side, I think we can do this. I think I can come out. Wow. But it was still mm-hmm. very scary. Wow. Because when did you uh, get in on this project, Nicole? What, what, what was your main part kind of in the formative process? And then... Well, that's the thing, because as I mentioned originally... Because you're not a sex worker. I'm not. Right. I'm not. So I think my entry point was honestly just our friendship. Yeah. Like my friendship with Andrea, we always had kind of a creative and intellectual bond. Yes. That was a huge part of our friendship. So I think just naturally we'd be sharing things we were working on. Mm -hmm. I started reading some of the stories she had written uh, based on her experiences over the two years that she was working. At that point, she had left the industry. Mm -hmm. But I just felt like I was personally very fascinated with the material. And I was very fascinated with like asking her questions about her experience. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, you know, for one thing, if I'm this interested in it, I feel like other people will be too. And then also I felt on a creative level, like very inspired. I felt like I could just see so much imagery, you know, jumping out into my imagination. So that's really where things grew from there. Yeah. Because mainly you're, um, is this, correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. you're a photographer, videographer. So you're a visual. Well, that's a great question. Cause like, honestly, Primarily, I work as a filmmaker, yeah. and um, I do have a background as a visual artist, and I work in as a multimedia visual artist now as well. Yeah. Uh, but this would be my largest photography endeavor. But yeah. it's really because when Andrea did decide to come out, and we knew that we didn't have to kind of toe the line anymore. Dance around. Yeah, exactly. It kind of felt like, oh, let's just make this a memoir, and let's yes. make it, you know, straightforwardly about Andrea. And I felt like... From that point, I could just use photography of Andrea to tell the story that way visually. And uh, so that really just made my role feel clear from that point on. Yeah. What are what do you think between the two of you are the stories and accompanying photographs that were the most powerful from the book? Do you have a favorite duo? Mm. That's such a great question. That is a great question. I mean, they're all powerful. Like I read the book in one sitting. Oh, um, I, I had it. I had it, and I held on onto it for like two weeks before I, I like because I wanted to like dedicate time and energy to it. Right? I didn't want to just like flip through a couple pages and then onto my life and then come back. And I wanted to like <laughs> get into it, girl. Yeah. And it was all of it's very powerful. And between the stories and the photography, it's just it comes together so powerfully. Thank you. Yeah. It's great to hear. It, it does. No, it yeah. for real does. Is there one that sticks out in your mind when you think of your faves from the book? Oh, my God. Um, I think that, you know, every photograph for us is so interesting to look at from our own perspective because we were there when it was created, too. So part of the joy of it is honestly the that memory. We have, yeah, the memory, like, yeah. which I know sounds corny, but I kind of... 
I don't know. I love that we have that documentation and then I can look at it and remember like us <laughs> trying to make the photo and what that whole thing was like. Then in that um, case, is there a specific photo that reminds you of a story or a memory that sticks mm-hmm. out in your mind? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're thinking about the same We are definitely <laughs> thinking of the same one. Would I mean, you like to say it, Andrea? <laughs> okay. Or wait, should we do it on the count of three and then see? <laughs> One, two, two, three. Masturbating Carrie cum man. shot. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> was that the same or no? It was not the same. <laughs> but same Andrew. idea. Same idea. So what did you? What was okay, yours? So I was going to tell the story about the guy on the beach masturbating. Okay, that's a great story. Okay, so we have two different stories. <laughs> um, <laughs> we think it's the same thing, but like similar themes. Similar themes. <laughs> yeah, I mean. That day was just so memorable. It was our first official photo shoot for the book. Um, We did several uh, shoots that day, just the two of us Mm -hmm. on the island. On Toronto Island? On Toronto Island. Which is, by the way, a family destination. (laughs) (laughs) There is a nude beach, but... Where we did end up going, and and part of the story leads us there, for sure. Mm -hmm. But while we were in the family-friendly section of (laughs) Toronto Island, we decided to do a topless shoot. Um, uh, based on the the story Our Girl Violet, which is this sort of like psychedelic, uh, 1969 inspired um, fairy tale, fairy tale basically. Mm -hmm. So we want it to be very groovy and flowery and we wanted greenery in the background. So we walked um, onto the shore through a forest path and um, we were were shooting successfully um, and then well, I mean, for one thing, there were like boats going by with children on them. <laughs> we're like, hello. Yeah, okay, <laughs> cool. Okay. And then um, we started to feel like our legs were getting itchy. Oh, no. And then we looked down and there's fire ants crawling up our legs and like coming <laughs> up. And we're like, oh, God, no. <laughs> So, um, of course, because we're professionals, we're like, let's just keep shooting. No, <laughs> we no. have to get the shot. We have to get the shot because we were working with film. It wasn't even digital, right? Like, we uh-huh. don't have second chances. We have to get the shot or bust. And yeah. we've made it this far. So, also, like, Andrea is at this point, just to paint the picture, you know, she's in full makeup and costume. Yeah. And it's a lot of effort to get to that point. So, we're already like, we'd climbed through a bunch of like treacherous shrubbery, shrubbery and stuff to even get to that part of the island. So, we're like, let's just do it. It's just some fire ants. There's a burning <laughs> sensation, but let's carry on. Ultimately, I'm familiar yeah. with burning sensation. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's not a bad deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, feels like home to me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Feels right. <laughs> Should probably have that looked at. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. So, I mean, after this, we make our way to Hanlon's Point, which is the, of course, um, clothing optional beach on Toronto Island. And we continue doing some more photo shoots. And part of our shoot was a wet t-shirt section. And yes. So and Nicole's concept is that she would be lying <laughs> on the sand, looking up at me while I straddled her. Yes. Um, and like taking like cool hot photos like that. And then uh, while we're doing this, I look over to my right and there is a man in the bushes laying on a towel, yanking his beating chain, it. just yeah. fucking beating it. And, uh, and I'm like, Nicole, there's a guy masturbating in the bushes over there looking at us. And then Nicole's like, well, are you bothered by that? And I was like, no. Because I'm not. Yeah, really? <laughs> Again, the theme is let's just keep shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we really need to just do yeah, this. Yeah, ants, masturbators, <laughs> do you no say big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I did was I looked over at him. We see you. Because he was waving at me oh, like this. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, Hello, sir. Hi. All right, well, let's just keep going. I don't think he's harmful. I, I've seen enough dicks in my life. This doesn't really offend me. He's yeah. on a beach. He's he seemed looking- kind of occupied. <laughs> anyway. He was, he was in his own world, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, then we wrap up our shoot, and as we're walking away, he runs after us Uh-oh. and is like, hey, wow, that was great. Oh. <laughs> like, thanks for the show, gals. And um, he's like, can I take you, dude, to lunch? And we're like, no, no, thank you. That's okay. He's like, what? I'll pay for it. <laughs> like, well, well, we 
we got that part. Yeah, we're good. Still not, we're good. still not <laughs> interested. Eventually, uh, shoot him away, and then afterward, there was more shenanigans in the water where some Vince Neil-looking guy with an inflatable motorized boat came over to us and was like, wet t-shirts, I love wet t-shirts, can I take a picture with you? And we're like, who, no, no. and he's like, I'll give you each $20. And Nicole's like, oh, no, and I was like, $20? That's $40, you realize. Like, no funny business? <laughs> and he's like, no, no, I just want the picture. And I'm like, okay. okay all right, whatever. let's do it. Just tag, just tag modern horror. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's like, my girlfriend knows I love wet t-shirts. Okay, buddy. Great. Like, good for you. Cool. Like, you're so unique. Yeah, so then <laughs> we took the money and got off the island, went to the bar and drank it. So, great. Great. That's